Hello and welcome to this second in our trilogy of biodiversity net gain assessment help tutorials. I'm assuming in this video that you've already watched the first one that I did, which is how to uh, get area and length based calculations from QGIS. And that way you won't be confused as to why we're looking at a picture of Old Trafford with some weird colours and lines over the top of it. Now, first up, I've got uh, a bit of an admission. I there's one step in this which is rubbish. Uh, the biodiversity net gain calculator that we have here, if we go into the technical data, there's a nice list here of all area-based habitats that the biodiversity net gain calculator needs. And I cannot find a way of copying and pasting that, and I cannot find anywhere where that list is replicated. So, Part of this is going to involve a whole bunch of typing, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, in, in order to, so I'm confusing myself by looking at too many things at once. In order to get all the habitats listed here as a drop down list in your QGIS layer, you are at some point going to have to type them all out unless someone can tell us how to copy and paste an existing list. Uh, here's one I've done earlier because watching me type a load of list of things together would be frankly boring. I've copied them into an Excel sheet and in order to get this then into QGIS, we're going to have to save it not as an Excel sheet, but as a CSV sheet. Now, I know in one of the earlier introduction videos that Stephen Coyne did that the uh, getting data into CSV has already been CSV data into QGIS has already been covered. Uh, I think this is slightly different and for a slightly different purpose. So I'm going to go through that again. Uh, sorry if it's boring, but what else can I do? So we're going to file, save as, and check that as CSV. So we know that that's what we're going to do. We're going to save. I'm not going to overwrite the existing file because I've already done this, uh, but you know, you can save it afresh. We'll come out of that and into QGIS. So that was a lot of waffle. What was the purpose of it? Uh, we want a biodiversity net gain habitats layer that has a drop down list for all the biodiversity net gain habitats. So we're going to open the attribute table. We're going to make a new layer. So new column, sorry. And I'm going to call it Biodiversity Net Gain Hab. We're going to make it a text column and we're going to give it load space in case it needs it. So that's an OK. Now, you could simply, if you wanted to, type all your habitats into there. But I think it's better to have a drop down list. Uh, when you come to interrogate the data later, uh, a single spelling mistake will mess up your calculations and you don't want that. So how do we get a drop down list in there? This, there's, there's a number of ways to do that. And this is the best way I have found to do it. I think it's the most robust way. Uh, we're going to load up our CSV layer that we made as a layer that doesn't have any geology information in it, geography information in it. Uh, and then we're going to get the two to link together. So layer, add layer, add delimited text layer. And then I'm just going to wiggle this so it looks a bit better. There we go. And then we're going to navigate to our biodiversity net gains, comma separated value list open that up we're going to make sure the file format is csv we're going to make sure that the first record has field names is ticked or unticked or got it. so i mean it shows you there so that's a value actually one and it thinks it's a header because that's ticked so we're going to untick that and that works nicely and i'm going to make the geometry definition to no geometry if you see it looking like this, then it thinks that you're trying to put in something 
which has location-based data. This doesn't, it's just it's just a list that we want. So no geometry. And add. Close that. And here it has appeared. So how do we get that into here in a useful way? I'm going to double click on area habitat. I'm going to click on the biodiversity net game tab that we made. And yeah, it might not come up as this actually. You need to, uh, let's, let's run through that again. I'm going to double click on area habitat. I'm going to click on attributes forms. Then I'm going to click on the biodiversity net gain field that we've made. And then where it says widget type, we're going to go down to value map. And then we get this series of options and we're going to load data from a layer because we've made our CSV file a layer already. I have loaded straight stuff, stuff straight from the CSV file using that option before, but it's gone wonky sometimes, so I like this way better. Uh, so, load data from layer, click that, and then we're going to select our layer, and here it is. And I'm going to collect, select field one for value and field one for description, because it's all the same stuff in this instance. OK. Uh, OK again. And then, if we are lucky. When we click on our biodiversity again habitat type, we get this in a little box and you click on it and there we have it. There's a list of all the data. So we'll, we'll fill this in for the sake of fun. Uh, swamp, that's going to be wetland and let's call it a fen habitat. Pond, there's a couple of options for ponds. Let's say it's a priority habitat pond. Why not? The pitch, that's going to be immunity grassland. I can never remember if that's in urban or not. There it is. And the wildflower grassland. I don't know if this is entirely correct, but uh, let's call it a lowland meadow. So that is one of the ways which we can get drop down lists into QGIS and have them relate into the biodiversity net, ga net gain habitat system. What I'd also like uh, is a column that gives the condition assessment. So let's do that as well. And we're going to use a different method of getting the drop down list in just because it's an easier method when you've got many fewer options. So we're going to call this condition assessment, just call it CA. Uh, and again, that's going to be text. And it's only going to be good, moderate or par, but we don't know run out of figures, we'll call it 20. Save that. And then we're going to go back into the area habitats tab. So we double click on this. Make sure it's on attributes forms again. On the CA uh, widget, as it calls it, we're going to go to value map again. This time, instead of loading uh, data from a layer or loading data from a CSV file, I'm just going to type directly into here. So, code. Moderate. And NA. And then we're going to click OK again. And if we go into our options, got a drop down list where we can quickly assign our condition assessments for each of the habitats that we have. So hopefully that points away at using QGIS in a useful manner for your biodiversity net gain assessments. Now, as I said in the first, oh, one point that I wanted to remember to say. the In the first video, 
I neglected to mention when we made our virtual layers, the information, the little bit snippets of code that we put in, are saved if you click on the fields value there. So you can always alter that if you like by clicking on the uh, formula button there and changing things around, should you ever wish to. So that's handy to know. And it's also, I wanted to say that the this information is actually saved in the styles uh, bit of the layer. So you can copy and paste the style and that will copy and paste the formulas in your uh, virtual layers as well. It's all set up neatly for that. Obviously, this is a simple example. Uh, if you wanted to, you could copy and paste this data straight to Excel and interrogate it that way. Uh, the next video will show you how to use the SQL function uh, in QGIS, the database manager, uh, to interrogate the data straight in QGIS. And I, I find that sometimes quite a good way of going about things. I think I'll make a slightly more complicated map uh, to use as an example for that, because you could feel what's the point looking at the, the one we've got, but it is only meant to be an example. Uh, as I said in the first video, I hope you found this helpful. If you know that there are better ways of doing things, uh, please feel free to make a video. And if you yeah, have found this useful in your professional life, feel free to make a donation to uh, the QGIS so we can keep having this wonderful software made for us for free. Uh, and our donation to your to a wildlife charity of your choice. Thank you very much, and speak to you again. Take care. Bye.